This is tutorial number two. We're going to talk about the shape editor, the shape pane, and then we're also going to get into the handles for each shape and what things you can actually change about each individual shape. There's also going to be a few keyboard shortcuts and a few other things that show up in here. So now let me bring in a simple box. I'm going to use the scroll wheel to zoom in on that box. And now as I zoomed in, the box is no longer centered. I like my work to be centered. That's just the way I work. So in order to do that, there's a great keyboard shortcut. If you hold down the shift key and click and right click, I'm sorry, hold down the shift key and right click, then you can actually move the whole work plane. Let me zoom out and show you what that looks like further away. Shift key, right click, you're moving that whole plane so that it is centered in your view. Or if the shape was over here, you can move it so that it was there. No big deal. I'm going to put my shape back there. I'm going to zoom in a little and recenter it. I think that is close enough for us today. You can also use the regular right click to move around and see all these different handles, but we'll get there. Now I need one more shape in here for later. I'm just going to go ahead and bring a cylinder in and I'm going to put that back in the back out of the way so I don't have to look at it right now. Right now I am on this shape. If I go here, I'll be on this shape. I'm going to bring my pane down. Let's show hide the panel. All right, no big deal. Most of the time this will be down automatically. So now I'm in the orange cylinder and now I'm over here. Notice that the options change for each shape. Every shape has different options that you can change. Let's go into the options for the cube or the box that they call it here. Big one, you can make it a solid shape or you can make it a hole. Later on, I'll make this into a hole so you can see what that looks like. Tinkercad is all about positive shapes and negative shapes, solids and holes. You can put holes somewhere to take away material or you can put a solid shape to add material. That's really all there is to it. It's really very simple to do once you get the idea of it. So I'm going to make this a solid. And once you do choose solid, you can pick whatever color you want. I'll keep it this way for now. However, remember that changing this color here, and this is important for students to know too, changing the color here does not change the color in the final print. The color of your final print is purely determined by what color filament you have in your 3D printer. These colors are just for design or to, to uh, distinguish one cube from another or something like that. This will not show in your final file, in your final print. Let's look at the different options for a cube. The radius is one of my favorites. Some 3D design, it's really design software. It's really hard to, um, to make this happen, but watch how easy it is by sliding the radius. Look at the edges here. These edges are perfect, crisp, 90 degree all the way around. Now, if I were to change the radius just a little bit, it actually smooths out those edges. It bevels everything. And that can be really, really great depending on what you're designing. It's very easy to do. Once you find a number that looks great, this is 1.49. I would make it 1.5 just to be a little more standard. And then once I'm happy with this, every shape that I design that I need a beveled edge, I can just make sure the radius is 1.5, very simple. Okay, that's the radius. You can also round it out way too much too. So I'm just, you know, it's easy to go right in here and make that what I want it to be. Really nice way to bevel those edges and make them nice and smooth. Now the steps is another way to smooth out your project and that is, what you see right here, these little tiny steps as you go around. If you increase the number of steps, you can see it smooths out the project. If you lower the number of steps, it will give you something much more, I would say cubical maybe is the word. Uh, very few steps, that's only like one step. Oh, yep, it is one step. So you can change that as you like. Um, if you're looking for a very detailed smooth model, you increase those steps. I think 10 is a good number. You usually don't have to mess with the steps. Uh, it comes in at a fairly smooth number anyway, just from when you pull it out, the stock setting. Now we've got length, width, and height. I can change the length. I can change the width. 
I can change the height. Very simple to do, just with the slider. Or I can say I need it to be 15 tall. That's we're working in millimeters here. We only use the metric system. I want it to be 20 wide, and then I want it to be 17.5 uh, long. It gives me exactly what I want. Very easy to change things here. Be careful of this lock. If you accidentally click that lock, that shape will be locked in place, and you will not be able to change anything about it. So sometimes a shape will just get totally stuck, and you have no idea what happened or how that happened. You probably just click that little lock icon right there. Just go click on the shape, select it, and then see if this is locked. See, now it's locked. I can't do anything with it. And even kind of has this little outline around it to tell you it's locked. Unlock. Now I can do anything I want. It's nice when you've got a shape just right in just the right spot and you don't want it to move, you can lock it there and then you can work around that shape with whatever else you need. Now that we've gone through all of this, I want to show you these actual handles. These really do correspond nicely to this. If you look at a corner handle, which are the white ones, you've got two dimensions. All right, So it gives you the two dimensions, length and width. You could click that little handle. And if I just pull it, I can adjust it any way I want. It could be anything you wanted, whatever. Just pull and you're there. Now, one really neat thing, if I hold control and click one of these little guys right here, these little corner handles, it actually grows it at a steady rate. Now, if I look a little closer, I could click a handle here, and I could say that I want this to be 20, and it will give me 20. I could say that I want this to be 30, it would give me 30. Just like I can do here, you can mess around with that here. Notice though, that as I change this shape, it didn't change here. It doesn't always correspond perfectly. So if you change it in one spot, it might not actually show that it changed in the other. But it did, this model is always correct. This isn't always exactly right. Okay, now, to change the height, you would go to that white handle. It is the one, I'm going to use my right click here and, and, and rotate. It's the one on the top. So that lets you change the height. Now, if you were to look underneath, and you go underneath here, now that handle has moved to the bottom. So it just naturally moves top or bottom wherever you need it to be. There we go, it kind of came back up to the top. The black handles give you a single dimension. So you're only moving in one dimension this way. You can click that little black handle and you can slide it in and out. You can click that handle and you can go over here and you can say that you want it to be a certain size and hit enter and boom, you've got that too. It really is simple to do and simple to adjust. The next handle I want to talk about is the cone. It's this little guy right here. When you put your mouse over it, it'll turn red. That way you know you have it. Now the cone, I'm going to zoom out a little, rotate with my right click, and I'm going to grab this cone. There it is. Watch what happens when I grab the cone and move my mouse up or down. It actually moves the shape up or down in 3D space. It doesn't change the height of the shape. The shape is still the same size. It is just actually higher or lower on the work plane. Be careful about moving anything lower on the work plane like this. This is essentially in the basement. It is below the work plane. And if I tried to 3D print that, it would never work because it's below the work plane. If I tried to 3D print just this shape like this, it would never work because my printer would try to print in the air. This blue grid, the work plane, is the corresponding part in real life to your actual print bed on your printer. You need to make sure that you have some part of your model directly on that print bed. Doesn't matter what part it is. I always look very carefully. Students like to blow through like that just a little bit. That would be a bad print. You need to make sure that you're just on the plane. And now I am. All right, so we've gone through all these different handles except for these three guys. These are the rotate handles. You've got rotate this way. I clicked my mouse, and then I'm going to rotate in large chunks. If you move your mouse further from the object, you'll notice that you can rotate in smaller chunks. It allows you to go from 
notes from very large standard increments, 22 and a half at a time. Or if you go far away, you can go to one degree at a time. Very simple to do. Now I could also say I want to go to minus 35 degrees, and it will put it right there. So you can actually add that right in there also, or 35 would be positive the other way. Easy to do. I'm going to reset that so it's straight even one instead of straight. Back again. There we go. This one works exactly the same way, just in a different direction. And then we've got this guy here. Sometimes these will disappear. Let me see if I can get an angle where you don't see one. I still see all three. Of course, I see all three still. No, oh, I can only see two. One and two. So it's there, but I just can't see it. So if you ever can't see the handle that you need, just move the object or move your view around, not the object, move your view around with the right mouse click, and then you'll find what you're looking for, the proper rotate or whatever that might be. So we've got now, we've gone over all the different handles the ways to bring in a shape, make it a solid or a whole, all the different options with each of the shapes. You know, we only went over the cube, but let me pull in the cylinder and you can see that I can say how many sides it has. That is how many flat sides are on. Now, if I wanted it to have 64 sides, those are super tiny sides and it's going to be a very detailed, smooth cylinder where a 12-sided cylinder I know cylinders are not supposed to have sides, but we're working with shapes like this. It, it, it's the way they're drawn. Um, you can increase that to get better detail. You can increase the bevel. See that right there? So if I increase the sides and the bevel, I'm actually smoothing this shape out quite nicely as I go. And you can increase, you can change the segments too and really smooth stuff out. You can get very detailed and make some really neat things with these wonderful sliders here per shape. And what if I wanted this as a whole in this shape? Really easy to do. I select the shape and tell it to be a whole. Now I'm going to bring that shape right into here. Now if I printed this, that shape would be just like this. It would be a, that looks like a, let's, we'll call it a rectangular prism because it's not a true cube. And when I printed it, there will be a hole in the center of that rectangular prism. That's the way this works. We'll get more into that later, and you can see it more once we get into some of the other controls. But for this tutorial, I just want you to play with shapes. Bring in a couple shapes, change their attributes, change their, their length, their width, their height. Use that little upside down ice cream cone to move that thing, to move the shape up and down. Just play around, move some shapes, get comfortable with changing the shapes and going into the shape editor here to change all the different parts of the shapes.